Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Alberta Canola Producers Commission, SAS Canola, and Manitoba Canola Girl. Talking frost in uh, canola, it's been a, a problem across much of Western Canada or parts of Western Canada this spring. We're with Anastasia Kubinek, oil seed specialist with Manitoba Agriculture. And uh, Anastasia, we're standing in a, a canola plot here. When growers make that decision whether they need to reseed due to, uh, to frost, it's not always an easy decision based on uh, just how cold it, it got over, overnight. No, it's uh, seeing the temperature on the thermometer panic sets in, then maybe going out to the field first thing after the frost, you may see lots of damage, you may see little damage, but it is really hard to uh, figure out what that long-term damage will be and how those plants are going to be affected. So what's the, the process that a grower should go through uh, in terms of ass assessing the crop after a, a freeze event? Well we do recommend that producers do wait a few days before they go out, but I don't blame them for wanting to go out right afterwards. I know myself, I will go to a field right afterwards just to see what things look like. Uh, but they do have to keep in mind that it does take a couple days for um, the extent of that damage to show up. Even if it looks terrible when you look at it the day afterwards, if you go back the next day or two days afterwards, you may see that there still is quite a bit of green tissue and that the growing point is okay and the plant is coming back. So things to really look for is specifically the actual growing point of the plant, not just necessarily the cotyledons or some of the leaves that have been damaged. If the growing point looks green, you are probably in pretty good shape. So things you want to look for when you are looking in the field for frost damage is first of all look to see what the tissue looks like on the plant. Uh, as we can see here we have uh, some tissue that's starting to look like it's desiccating. It's starting to get brown and quite wilty, whereas in the middle we still have a very green growing point. So when you are assessing your canola in the field, the growing point is actually the most important. Uh, cotyledons, first leaves that have had some frost damage and are damaged, yes they will die off, but this growing point, as long as it is green and it's still continuing to grow, you'll get more leaves and you will have a, a plant. Another thing to note is when you're out in the field, you will see areas where you have damaged plants, but then you also see right next to it, you have plants that look very healthy. So at the end of the day, what you really want is to make sure that you have enough plant stand in the field when you're looking at it. So even though we have damaged plants here, we still do have quite a few uh, plants. If you're looking at an area that maybe only had one or two looking like this, that can still be enough to make a crop, but it would be better to have a few more than that, or if you are going with this, to make sure that you're controlling your weeds really early on to make sure there's no impact of the weeds on the yield of the crop, and then to watch pretty closely for flea beetles as well, and to control those so that they're not uh, eating off quite a bit of this very small new growth. So when it comes to making the decision whether it's worth receiving, it, it comes down to your plant, your plant survival rate, how, how many plants you have left on, on the field? Right. Uh, what we really suggest guys to do is go out and start counting per square foot or per square meter. Uh, if you don't have a tool for a square meter, you can just use your feet and make an L and start counting how many plants are within your feet or you know your uh, uh, spacing between your rows and kind of calculate that way of what your plant stand is. We do really recommend that you're having three to four plants per square foot. But with the herbicide tolerant varieties that we have and the great weed control, you can probably get away with one to two plants per square foot. Now that is keeping in mind that you don't have any other stresses when you have that low plant stand, especially at the one to two plants per square foot. You really need to be uh, on top of controlling your weeds really early on and then really watching it for flea beetle damage because any extra stress on those very few plants that are left there can really um, break that crop off. And that plant per square foot recommendation would also apply for flea beetles or, or uh, for yes. the cumulative effect of all yeah. the stressors? Yeah, that's our absolute minimum. I know there's a lot of research out there and meta-analysis done that says you really start uh, losing yield when you're below five plants per square foot. But in a situation like this where we are the first of June, uh, do I reseed, do I leave, leave what I have? It is kind of a toss up because it could get hot and dry you know, next week and never rain again till July and then that plant stand might not be as good so it might be better just to leave the plant stand that you have even though it's a very few plants but if they're well advanced and you can keep on control of all the other things that could be happening to the crop it might be better to leave it. What about the date on the calendar? How, how does that impact our decision right now? Well date is starting to get up there. Um, if you start 
calculating till September 1st when we can start getting those fall frosts. We're only looking at about 90 to 93 days. So we can, in some areas you could be getting a little bit nip and tuck. Um, then things to keep in mind too if you are going to reseed is you want to try and do some of your activities that you're going to try and actually reduce that maturity in the crop. So seeding at a higher seeding rate instead of seeding at three and a half to four pounds per acre you might want to bump it up to five or even a little bit higher because more plants in an area is going to cause um, inter-plant competition and you will reduce your maturity a little bit. As well we really do not recommend farmers to put on any more fertilizer with that crop to use what's in the field already. Yes your original crop may have used some but excess nitrogen in the soil is going to cause quite a bit of vegetative material in your crop and it's going to lengthen out what your maturity is. So just seed that crop right back in there with the fertilizer that you have, higher seeding rate and that will help reduce the maturity a bit. Also maybe going to an early maturing variety, that can shave a few days off your maturity as well. If you are going for the crop insurance reseeding option, they do ask that you destroy the crop. So they are wanting you either to work it or spray it. Um, if you have crusting issues, you may want to work it up to try and loosen up that soil so that next crop has a better chance to get through that crust. Uh, if the soil itself is actually in pretty good shape, you don't have a lot of crusting or baking or anything like that, but you do want to get rid of the plants that are already there as well as all the weeds that have probably come up, it is probably better to just spray it out uh, with a combination I know for canola where it works great is a glyphosate and a meroxynol mix. It will get any of the canolas as well as it's uh, getting a lot of the other weeds that are there too. You mentioned crop insurance. It's important to take all their uh, requirements into consideration too when, when reseeding? Yes. Uh, I know there's a long queue right now for uh, an inspector to come out to the fields, but one thing to talk to the agent when you are trying to book that inspector is what is the requirements they have. Um, it may be that you leave a 10 foot strip every 40 acres, uh, or it might be different depending on which jurisdiction that you're in. You may want to talk to them too that could you start reseeding now and just leave those strips and they can come and reassess later versus can they get out to your place right away. Um, they will probably talk to you too about uh, how you're going to destroy that crop. They may want evidence of that as well and they will be probably talking to you about if you're reseeding back into canola or another crop what some of the insurance premium implications are. And finally then also uh, part of the decision might seed supply what there is for, uh, for canola seed available that might also impact whether or not you decide to reseed? For sure. Um, some of the varieties that maybe were more popular and what you'd want to go back into they may not be available anymore. I think most of the companies though have been trying to move seed to the areas where the frost did occur so there should be lots of seed available it just may not be necessarily the, the variety you want but uh, you should probably still be able to get canola seed. Should you change your, uh, your maturity or the, the length of your, uh, your season? Uh, that is definitely one thing to look at. Um, some of those really late maturing varieties, you may not want to go back into that. We have seen success in some years though where uh, farmers have done that. The year has played out beautifully for them, they had a fabulous crop. But in lots of years where we are getting that really cold spring damage, it can turn hot and dry. So if an early maturing crop, you're just hopefully going to get a bit of a better crop too. Alright, well thanks for your time Anastasia. Thanks.